Hey Terrarians, how's it going? My name is Pixelated Fireball, and welcome back to another episode of Terraria Journey's End. So, as you can see, I'm being assaulted by slime. Of course, after I defeat the Golem and the Plantera and all the other terrifying threats of hard mode, I get assaulted by the big sky goo, which is just fantastic. Real serious threat that King Slime is now, especially since I've got the beetle armor and I believe he would just absolutely one-shot me. But anyway, all that aside, we have a lot of business to take care of today, a lot of things that need done. First of all, I want to show you a build that I did just very, very briefly, but I did a couple of things that I think are kind of interesting that maybe you also as well might find interesting. And it's all the way over here, because we got just about every NPC available, but we did miss one. And that, of course, was the truffle. So I made myself this little pit down here. And I used a meteorite that had spawned over here to have this big space. I just mined all that out, broke all the background walls, and I put some of my own back here. And this stuff, you can't tell because I painted it blue, but this is the underworld walls. I believe this one right here to the left is the charred stone, and I think the more solid rocky looking one is the magma stone. And like I said, they're under underworld background walls, stuff that generally spawns in that little lower cavern layer that you can get from using hellstone with ecto mist from a graveyard. And I painted them blue, mainly because I think it was either blue or deep blue, I don't remember, I think it was blue that I used. But I think they look really cool, almost like they glow already and they match the color scheme of the mushroom biome very well. I like the charred stone because it doesn't look like stone whenever you paint it blue and put it in the mushroom biome. It looks sort of like, you know, winding mycelial roots, you know, like the roots of the big mushrooms growing in the background coming through the ground, sort of winding around, holding this whole area together, this little floating area down here. And then of course we have Agaric, or Agaric, one or the other, inside of the giant mushroom house, which, you know, he's very cozily, comfortably enjoying his time down there. And I got myself a mushroom pylon, which is entirely useless because he's the only one that lives down here. My god, these slimes are starting to become a burden. Oh my god, okay. But there we go. That's my surface mushroom biome. I think that's pretty cool. I think this is a new background as well. I think that looks very interesting. It has like a nice lake back there, mushroom fields. Never mind the slime raining down in the background. But anyway, that's the only thing that I did off camera that you missed. I did go and grab myself some of the new items to summon some of the new bosses. I got myself a prismatic lacewing, which was actually rather challenging to find, but thankfully the life form analyzer, I believe, showed where it was. You just sit in the hollow next to a water candle and wait for one to show up. And whatever you do, don't kill it. Do not accidentally kill it. That's a mistake. And of course, I got the truffle worms to fight Duke Fishron when the time comes. But anyways, like I said, the first order of business is going to be dealing with the Martians. That is what I'm going to do first. I know that I can fight the Empress of Light right now, but I want to make sure that I have the best weapons available to me. I definitely want to make sure that I have the best defense, the best weapons, the best things that I could possibly use. I went back and fought the Golem to get the Possessed Hatchet because of its homing capabilities. I reforged it. Because if I'm going to be fighting the Empress of Light in melee, I'm going to want to be able to fly around in circles and jump and bob and dodge and weave around every single attack because if she is as much of a bullet hell as I think she is, oh boy, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to that is what I'm trying to say. I am a little bit uh, intimidated to say the least. So anyway, right now, first order of business is going to be hunting down a Martian probe, and hopefully we get one. I don't know how long it's going to take for one to show up, but I have my little area up here in space, relatively close to space, at the water candle. Hopefully a probe decides to pop down and say hello. I'm going to wait a little bit, and we're going to hang out up here until one finally decides to show up, and then we will take the fight to the Martians and prevent them from eating all of our NPCs' brains. So I'll see you then. Oh, there we go. After a million wyverns and harpies defeated, we got our Martian probe. All right. Looks like they're coming for a visit. Let's go this way. Let's go over to our nice, comfortable little arena. Hopefully, I'll be able to handle this. They are pretty tanky. 
There's the Scutlicks. My only concern really is the Martian Saucer. Why don't I wall this off here? That way, they can't get out, but I can still get them with the power of yo-yos and cheese. I will defeat the Martians with the power of cheese. Can the hatchet get out? No, it cannot. This one's gonna take a while. This is the invasion that I was worried about for the longest time, was the Martians. Just because it normally takes me an eternity to beat to begin with anyway. I think the last time I fought the Martians in Vanilla Terraria, it ended up taking me like a half an hour to actually beat them. Just because I died so much. Thankfully, I've got the power of cheese on my side. Well, this is anticlimactic. I'm gonna go out there into the fray and we're gonna see all what we can do to these guys. Okay, they hit relatively hard. Maybe this was a bad idea. Maybe jumping into the fray was a mistake. Oh well, we got this. I can handle this, this won't be a problem. Oh my god, okay, so the laser beams might be a slight problem. Okay, back back into the safety hole. Can I make it into the safety hole? Okay, they're all coming at me this way. Martian drone, get away from me, I don't want blown up. Martians, you're gonna zap me. Okay, so maybe leaving the comfort of the safety hole was a mistake. We must purge the filthy Xenos from this world. Ah, the angry Nimbus is joining the fight. Not fair. They're using the powers of the clouds against me. There you go. Good job, aliens. Just come nice and single file straight towards me. That's what we want you to do. Nice and single file. Straight line. One after the other, please. Thank you. No, no flanking. I already discussed this with the frost moon. No flanking. Was it the, was it the pumpkin moon? I don't remember. One of the moons. Battle tactics against me is not acceptable. I will stop you with a yo-yo. Oh, there it is. There's the saucer. Well, I bet that's a guaranteed one shot. So let's go into our safety box. Ah! After he's done full autoing me. No, into the safety box. Safety box. Oh, wait a minute. That's just not acceptable. Hold on a second. Does that thing travel through solid blocks now? Tell me that it doesn't travel through solid blocks. Oh, God, it does. Ow. Okay. So it appears as though that they have learned. Well... You might have learned how to defeat solid blocks, but I'll tell you what you didn't learn how to do. Beat pirate ships. Let's go, saucer. Bring it on. I'm just going to run away from you. I'm just running. There's a lot of things all flying at me at once. I just got to get out of range of everything else. Ah, no, not going right towards that. Ow. I need a heal. That's what I need. I need a heal. And I need to not get bla blasted. Oh, boy. So they have learned how to avoid solid blocks. This is going to be much more interesting. Maybe this will take a half hour after all. Nope. And the Scutlicks got me. Well, the guide's dead. I suppose that brain you can have. I'm surprised you actually found something in there to begin with. I'm noticing a significant lack of saucer spam. There's one right there. All I had to do was mention it. And I have no health, hardly at all, which is a problem because, uh, yeah, I'm almost dead. And I'd really rather not have to wait an eternity for another one to show up. It seems like his movements are a lot slower. Uh, that doesn't help me from dying, though. Oh, God, okay, yep. Yep, I can't avoid that. I cannot fight one of those things with low health. It's just not going to work. Mm. It looks like it moves slower, but it's more treacherous because you can't cheese it. Well, I'm hesitant to actually kill any more of these guys to get one to show up because I don't want to end up ending the event before I even kill one of them. It seems like that's the kind of luck I've been having with events and invasions lately. I hard I'm hardly getting any of the bosses. I'm just getting all the little enemies. There we go. I still have low health again, and that drone might just kill me. Get away from me, oh boy. I need just some kind of attack. Possessed hatchet. We're going to go with that. That's the one that I have that can eat seek. Something that does not require full focus on accuracy, that I can just fly in circles, backstroke, immediate backstroke. How does it feel, boss, to have the dynamic changed? Now I'm flying in circles around your head and shooting things at you. Ah, God, I have to avoid getting hit by the laser beam. Oh, I defeated the Martians and I got electrocuted to death at the very end. Well, that is disappointing. I only got like two saucers throughout the course of that entire event. Two. Maybe three, I don't remember exactly how many it was, but that's pretty much all I got. That's that's disappointing, I gotta say. I'm not, I'm very pleased with that. Maybe I gotta fight him again until I actually have enough banners to wipe out these little guys. That's a shame. I was hoping to at least get an influx weaver. I'm not so much worried about the UFO mount, 
because I already have the black spot. But still, it would have been nice to get something from him. Oh well. Well, I know a creature that I won't have all that much trouble with, hopefully. And I'll definitely get something from if I beat it, is Duke Fishron. So, that is the next order of business. And I don't think I actually built an arena prepared for him yet. So that's going to be the next things that I do. I'm going to get rid of this lovely graveyard that the Martians were so kind to leave behind. I'm going to go over to the ocean and I'm going to try and build a decent arena for Duke Fishron. And then we're going to face off against him and see how that goes. Hopefully, it gives me something nice. Maybe get myself a nice pair of Fishron wings or maybe a Flareon or something like that. Who knows? We'll see. So, when the time has come to face off against Duke Fishron, I'll see you then. All right, so we're finally at the ocean. And, of course, as if on cue to follow the bad luck of getting almost nothing from the Martian Madness, the second that I got over to the ocean to start building this lovely coral lit up platform over here to fight Duke Fishron on, I was assaulted by a solar eclipse which is one of the only times that I have actually gotten one to naturally happen in the game. And there's a Martian probe. Should I let it go? I think I might not have a choice. Nope, I got it. Okay, well, that's not going to happen again. Of course, I mentioned Martian probes, and I wanted to fight it again, and now I can't, be, but one showed up, and now the next time I go looking for one. Anyway, okay. This is, this is, this is something. Anyway, before anything else potentially good and or possibly bad happens, I'm just going to jump right into this. I got my platform built up here. We have a lovely lantern night. We got all this good luck surrounding us. Hopefully it won't be awful, but we're going to give this a try. Let's fight Duke Fishron. All right, buff up. Let's go. What do we got here? Oh, it sounds like we got a new soundtrack for it as well. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Shame I got all these other enemies down here fighting me, but I guess that's the burden of fighting him at night. Let's bring out the possessed hatchet, because I think this might be better for ranged. Oh, I forgot about my Icor. Oh, I completely and totally forgot about that. Well, hopefully that's not a problem. It looks like we're handling him pretty easily already. He's not hitting me for a pile of damage like the Martians were, but I don't want to jinx anything. Should I use the Flying Dutchman's mount here? Should I use the Black Spot? I don't know if that'll be the best ever because I don't have all that much mobility. I'm in a very limited space here, and he already moves very quickly. Well, luckily, most of his attacks are being blocked and or avoided. Did he get a nerf? I seem to remember him being a little bit more powerful. Well, I don't, like I said, I don't want to push my luck here. I don't want to jinx anything. Come on, fish boy. Let's go. Oh, my God. There is a lot of shark rons. Or what? what is it? Shark of Cthulhu? Something of Cthulhu. I know there's a Cthulhu-related thing going on here. Do not seek after the sharks. That is a waste of time, you dummy. Okay, things are about to get a little crazy right now. He's about to go to his last phase. Lucky for me, I brought a hunter potion, so I should be able to see him no matter what. All right, bring it on, fish Ron. I'm going to run right through that for no reason at all whatsoever. Okay, here we go. Okay, hunter potion does not work. It doesn't really make all that much of a difference. Just keep dodging. Keep focusing on dodging. 100% dodge. 100% on dodge. It's going pretty well so far, as long as I don't get murdered by all the dumb stuff. Don't get hit. Come on, don't let the dodge get weak. Oh, boy. Okay, we're slacking on the dodge. Come on, possessed hatchet. You got this. You got this. Oh, my God. Okay, come on. Come on. Not doing very much damage to him right now, but it's all right. Everything's good. Everything is all good. Everything's all good. Come on, fish run. You're done. Done and over with. I'm done running. Maybe I shouldn't be done running. This might end very quickly if I don't start running more. There we go. Duke Fishron is finally down. Look at that relic. That adorable little Fishron buddy there. Well, I didn't get any pets from him, but we can fight him again if he doesn't drop me what I want. We got the wings, and we got a Razorblade Typhoon. Of course, whenever I'm not playing a mage. We got the wings. How about that? There we go. Well, while I still have potions active and I still have the majority of their effects, I think I'm going to fight him one more time and hopefully I get the Flareon and maybe the pet. We're going to give it a try. Okay, one more time. Let's fish up another fish, Ron, and see how it goes. Oh, and he got me. Oh, boy, that's not good. Well, that did not end all that fantastically, but that's all right. We got the wings. Did not get the flail that I wanted. This has just not been a lucky day for me. Well, with all that going on, I can only imagine how the Empress of Light fight is going to be. It is just going to be a lovely peachy adventure. I cannot wait. 
Well, I think Duke Fishron goes right down here. I'm pretty sure that's where it's supposed to go. And now we got the Fishron wings, which are just absolutely fantastic. Look at that. They actually don't look too bad with the red and black dye on. But there we go. Super fast flying wings, which I guess won't really make all that much of a difference because I plan on using the black spot to fight the Empress of Light. I'm planning on doing what I did for the mechanical bosses and just swapping out my wings and my Terra Spark boots. All the mobility stuff, probably using the possessed hatchet to fight her because of its homing capabilities. We're gonna get rid of the yo yo bag. Swap that out with some of the higher defensive items that I have available to me down there, like the turtle shield and whatnot. Not the turtle shield, the frozen shield. This thing right here. All that defense. Six defense base and then warding adds another four. That's fantastic. So. That'll be the next order of business. I'm gonna get my gear all nice and swapped out, and then I'm not sure if I need to fight her in the hollow, or if this thing will just disappear if I summon it anywhere else. I'm not sure. All I know is that I have to kill it, and then she'll show up and proceed to murder me with all of her glowing shiny lights. I'm not gonna fight her in the daytime, though. That is absolutely not a good idea. I've, I've, I've already heard about what she's like in the daytime. So I'm gonna wait for it to be nighttime, get all my gear nice and straightened out, switched around the way I want it, and then we're gonna fight the Empress of Light and then probably bring this episode to a close and then finally be on the home stretch of Journey's End. So when the time has come, I'll see you then. All right, it's finally nighttime and there is no time to spare. Time to kill this prismatic lace wing that I have saved in the inventory here and summon forth the Empress of Light. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if I actually have to fight her inside the hallow, but we're going to give it a try here. We're going to take her for a ride. Oh, boy. Here we go. Okay. Buff up. Let's take her for a ride. Go possessed hatchet. It looks like I don't have to. Oh, my God. She... Well, hello. Okay. This is all kinds of something. This is all kinds of something else right now. I, uh, I forgot to mention, I kind of jumped into this pretty quickly, but I did do what I said I was going to do and switched a lot of my items around. I gave myself a... Wow, okay. It is... Uh, bleh, <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to be able to speak right now. I'm just going to attack, and that's just going to be how this goes. 120 damage. We're just going to take it for a ride. I'm going to try Scourge of the Corruptor for some more long range. Let's use this so I can actually see where she's at. Oh, boy. This is exciting. Not down or up. I can't go up, can't go down, left, can't go any direction right now. This... This is, this is something. Well, I, I admire the sprite, I will say that. It's a very interesting sprite. So, Flying Dutchman, Black Spot, working pretty well right now, making a lot of the attacks relatively irrelevant. Except for that dodge that I can't seem to get out of the way of. This thing, excellent opportunity to change directions, and she has the lovely niceness to show up directly behind me. I'm seeing a pattern, though. I am detecting a pattern. The pattern is that I can't stay out of the way of attacks. That's the pattern. Looks like she dashes, shoots the beams out. Now she'll dash again, right? Yeah, there we go. And then she'll do some other ability. Yeah, that little bright light show in the sky up there. She'll do that, and then she'll dash again. And then that big spirally thing, and then she'll reset. Yeah, there we go. I think I've got the movement pattern analyzed here. There we go. What's she doing now? Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, okay. Never mind, I take it back. I guess I have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, she's got wigglies now, that's much better. And she hits dramatically harder. Heal, don't hit the things, don't stand in the light show. Don't touch anything. Any if it's lit up, don't touch it. Okay, 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 okay. Oh wow, she's got a lot of speed, she's got speed. She's real fast. She's glowy and she's fast. Ooh, colorful. I will say this is an extremely colorful boss. I don't even know what it would be like fighting this in the daytime. If it's this bad at night, I can only imagine nighttime. Switch direction. I don't even want to say anything about being close to death. I'm, I'm not even going to think about it. Oh my god. All right. Okay. 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 There we go. She's dead. I did it. Oh my god. Wow, that was some kind of something. Oh boy, I got a headache. That's so many colors. That was definitely a boss. What'd we get? We got Starlight, what do you do? Oh, wow, now I am the rainbow shooter. What are you, Empress Wings? 
Can be worn in vanity slots. Allows flight and slow fall. Hold up to boost faster? Oh, okay. Well, those look really cool. I like that a lot. Seems very pretty. I'm imagining that they are... Yes, they are glowy. They are very glowy, pretty, sparkly butterfly wings. Hmm. And I got prismatic dye. Oh, so now I can be the rainbow. And the soaring insignia grants infinite wing and rocket boot flight. Increases flight and jump mobility. Well, how about that? So I can just have an accessory that flat out makes wings even better on top of the empress wings. Are they better than the fishron wings? I'm assuming. Hold up to boost faster. That might be very, very good for dodging. Well, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? We got ourselves a new sword. Ha! Ah, I can blind you. Take that, everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay, I like this. This is amusing. This is very, this is a very amusing weapon. Okay. Anyway, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Empress of Light. My god, I can't even imagine what fighting that during the daytime would be like. I don't even want to think about it. I got, I got a headache just thinking about it. Okay. Anyway, guys, there you go. Another boss down, and we are finally on the home stretch of Terraria Journey's End. So, I guess I'm going to call it an episode here, guys. So, thank you so much for stopping by and checking me out. I really appreciate it. And as always, whatever it is, wherever you are, day or night, hope you're having a good one of those. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.